another quick basic video. Again, these videos are intended for the brand new carter uh, or someone looking for basic education on karting. So this one here is how to inspect the bottom end of a go-kart chassis. Uh, we just happen to have a used Invader chassis in front of us. It has a Briggs World Formula. And I'm just going to give you a couple of quick pointers. So you're looking for scratches. You're looking for grind marks. Again, this is the lower end of the chassis. Um, from axle, that's what we call this part here that goes from spindle to spindle. That's the front axle. You're looking for grind marks. The floor pan it matters a little bit on grind marks, but you're really looking at the steel, the steel tubing and the grind marks. Now, sometimes you'll get carts that are pretty worn out and ground and then they paint over it. So you want to make sure there's no flat spots. So this one actually, surprisingly, the paint looks pretty beat up, but you don't see any deep flat grinds on the front axle. The other area to look for is down here on the side rails in the waste. Again, the hardware, the paint is pretty beat up on this one, but the actual tubing, there's, so that's a good sign. Uh, another thing to look for is some uh, racers will put uh, frame guards on the bottom of their carts to keep them from grinding. So that can give you a false sense of how much time is actually on the chassis, but at least you don't get the accelerated wear and tear from going over curbs or high spots on the track where they grind down the bars. Again, it's an invader. The front axle, very minimal grind marks. Now the floor pan, which is aluminum and replaceable, uh, those are generally going to be pretty hammered, especially in this area, unless they have a frame guard that goes over the floor pan. Um, and again, back to the side rails. Down here, the side rails to each side of the seat. Those are in good condition. Uh, the frame clamps. So you see the frame, um, sorry, the engine mount clamps. Those are not too terribly ground off. That's a good sign. The rear cross tube, not too terribly ground up. Now the paint is missing. So um, it's definitely been, I'll call it shot peened for lack of a better term. Uh, bottom of the seat, minimal grinding. Now, depending on the chassis that you're buying, some cart manufacturers, they will give you kind of a recommended height for the seat, uh, depending on the engine class, the weight of the driver, et cetera. And in some cases, the seat will actually be below the frame rails and, and they wear holes through them. That's not necessarily a bad thing, um, except for if there's an actual hole in the seat, that's going to be a safety issue. So it's probably going to require a new seat. But again, frame rails here on the side. Minimal grinding, minimal grinding from the actual track. Now, where we do have some issues on this particular chassis, you'll see where the seat struts are. They have been repaired. They have been welded. You'll see where this one has been reinforced and rewelded. Both sides have been uh, basically welded. Looking at the condition of the cart itself, there's some a little bit of grind marks there, but not too bad. It's not flat. It's just a surface and a little bit into the steel, but they're not flat. But you're going to be looking at these corners here. You're going to be looking for cracks around the cassette hangers looking for cracks in these areas uh, cracks or welds so if you're not a fabricator i myself am not a fabricator um, and you don't have access to a good welder then when you're looking at cards like this that needs to factor into your decision anything can be repaired any reputable cart shop can repair this stuff uh, but keep in mind uh, especially in california if you're in California, uh, the typical shop rate is anywhere from $100 to $150 an hour, even in the cart shops, because in California, things are just more expensive. They can repair it, but you got to ask yourself, is two to four hours of repair work, if that's going to add two to $400 to your bill, is that cart worth it? So it doesn't mean the cart's terrible, but if you can't do the fab work yourself, you need to think about stuff like that. So again, these are things to look for. I get on this particular cart, it has been gusseted, it has been welded. Now, 
looking at all the cross tubes, looking at the waist, looking at the front hoop, I'm going to make the assumption here that the reason these seat struts broke, it's not uncommon for seat struts to break on go-karts. It really depends on the track, and it also depends on how, um, how big a seat is, how heavy the driver is. This seat here is an extra large seat. I can see where the seat struts have been in boards beyond perpendicular, leaning away from the seat in order to accommodate the large seat. And I'm going to make the assumption that's why these seat struts broke is because the struts are welded and fixed to the chassis and they were widened out to fit the extra large seat. Now, one way to rectify this is if you buy a cart from a shop, you have them size the seat for you. You have them install the seat. And I have seen on the extra large or larger seats, shops will actually just cut these off. They'll cut the seat struts off and they'll move them outward. Um, again, you do not want the seat struts bent so they are away from the seat and no longer perpendicular to the chassis because then you lose your strength of the actual seat strut. So again, that's some things to look at when you're buying a used chassis. Again, this is the underside. Brake rotors. You want to see if the brake rotors have any missing or chipped damage on the brake rotor itself. I'm probably going to cut this video a little bit shorter just because we're, let's focus on grinding. I already had this one on a vertical cart stand, so it was very easy to kind of look for things. Uh, the other thing to look for is this area is always usually covered with a lot of grease. If it's clean, or sorry, the chain guard, this is nitpicky, but usually if all of this area is pretty clean, uh, in the cassette hanger area, then usually that owner probably took pretty good care of the cart or they stripped it down and cleaned it themselves before selling it. So again, just some other things to look for. So there you have it. Now this is not the end all videos of how to inspect a go-kart chassis. These are just some pointers and things to look for. I'm trying to make these videos quick and short so they're quick and easy to watch. And as we get more carts through our shop, extracartparts.com, then we will just do videos that we find that might be helpful to that new carter out there. Thank you for watching. And if you have suggestions on new videos, let us know in the comments. Thank you.